Oh, oh, no, nope, it's not show and tell, it's a Q&A. Hello, everybody, Adam Savage in my cave, and uh, this morning, it's morning where I am, uh, I am answering some of your questions that uh, tested patrons have submitted. Um, I didn't look over these in the beginning. <laughs> uh, okay, Jared Hinderer. It's a fascinating last name, Jared. Hinderer. Hinderer. I'm curious what your people did for a living. Because it sounds like they got in the way of stuff. <laughs> um, there's a great book called uh, Mother Tongue, English and How It Got That Way by Bill Bryson. And it points out that uh, the only reason people got last names was because we started doing larger censuses to figure out taxes and we needed to delineate between Glenn over there and Glenn over here. And so they'd say, well, this is Glenn the blacksmith and this is Glenn... Uh, the the fer the the farrier uh and they would get last names based on their occupations however the farther away you were from where the 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 center of activity was the harder it was to get to you and the, you know then as now the last mile is the real bugbear of governance and you were if you were far from the center of activity you were also often likely to get a last name based on what other people thought of you now, if you live close to the action, you could run that off at the pass. But if you lived way out at the farm and you were like, a, uh, 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 you had robbed somebody, that's why there are last names like thief and robber. Those are like, ah, Jim the robber. Yeah, I mean, you know, sorry. Jared Hinderer. <laughs> so maybe your people got in the way of stuff and the census takers were like, ah, the hinderers, that's what we're calling them. Maybe it's just a Germanic word for something, total occupation I don't know about. At any rate, Jared wants to know, for a job at a company like ILM, how much of the hiring process is based on prior work, i.e. a portfolio, and how much is based on the applicant's willingness to learn? Is a portfolio the end-all, be-all of a model-making job? Uh, no, and in fact, I don't think my portfolio is the reason I got hired at ILM. I think it was word of mouth. Uh, in combination. It, and I think that's the split. I think in anything you're going to do for a living, there are two aspects to it. There is your skill at the thing that you're doing and your ability to learn new aspects of it and solve problems in it. And then there's the relationships that you build along the way. Um, and those two things are equally as important. So when I first interviewed at ILM, which was probably like... Uh, early 1997. I think that's probably, it could have been early 98. Right. I got hired in late 98, like August, September. So I think I showed uh, Mark Anderson my portfolio like in January or February of 98. Uh, and we had a lovely time. I went over to their, they, at the time, Industrial Light and Magic had all of these buildings on Kerner Boulevard in San Rafael. And there was one, uh, uh, where you went to the front entrance, but it was just an address. There was like nothing on the front that said anything. It said Kerner Optical, and you looked through the window, and I could see a Darth Vader through the the the, the, the tinted window, and I was like, this must be it. Uh, and Mark Anderson met me, took me on a tour through the shop, sat down and looked at my portfolio. And uh, as a supervisor now, I know that that portfolio showed him all that he needed to know. Uh, um in terms of that I was hireable. Uh, and at that point, I don't think that they were, uh, they weren't hiring more people. So he just put me on a list. Uh, and I think the difficulty, if Mark told me correctly, was that he ended up thinking that I was somebody else. He ended up thinking that I was a different person who he'd looked at their portfolio and he didn't think, I, I don't know who he thought I was, but he didn't call me <laughs> when they were staffing up. And it took my friend, Christine Ells and my mentor, Mitch Romanowski, both sort of hammered away at different people at ILM and said, you should hire this guy. If you're bringing in people, hire this guy, hire this guy. So the word of mouth and the relationships, I think, are what got me that work at ILM. Um, all that being said, a willingness to learn is super important in any employee, but it's not... 
Again, you a portfolio is not going to show you that. Uh, I've told the story before. I'm going to tell it again. I, I, at one point, I was talking to an art director that I was working with on uh, on a film, and because it was, I was teaching at the time at the Academy of Art College and advanced. I was teaching advanced model making in the automotive department at the Academy of Art. And my students wanted to know, what should I put in my portfolio? And I asked the CG supervisor of the film I was working on, hey, uh, what, should I, what should I tell my students? And he said, you know, if you bring me a portfolio of stuff that you designed and built, he said, yes, it shows me that you're a designer and it shows me that you are a builder, but it does not show me what it took to get you from one to the other, right? Like, I look at something you designed, I don't know how close or far you were from where you started, so I don't have any metric to know. Like, you might have built the most beautiful miniature Wild West town that I've ever seen, but if it took you a year to do it, I, I'm not gonna necessarily hire you to do a job that'll take a couple of weeks. Um, that might be a bad example, but you kind of understand my, my point there. Uh, what the CG supervisor told me was, bring me a picture of something that I know. Just a second. So what the CG supervisor told me was, bring me a picture of something that I know what it should look like, like a 57 Chevy. He said, if I see you modeled a perfect 57 Chevy, then I know I can give you a picture of nearly anything and you could make it or draw it. Um, it's also about that interpersonal relationship. If I'm talking to someone and I can feel the confidence in their work, I can feel they telling me honest stories about how it went, uh, I'm often getting a feel for the kind of person I'm dealing with, you know, and I'm going to look for humility. I'm going to look for ingenuity. I'm going to look for excitement at some of the problems they solved. <laughs> I remember one guy interviewed with me for something and he brought me all these pictures of wind tunnel prototypes he'd built at a skunk works in California for like classified planes. And I remember looking at these pictures and being like, did you break any national security laws to take these? Cause this is gorgeous, but I don't feel like I should be looking at these. Um, look, a willingness to learn is, I mean, it's a key to life, right? A willingness to learn means a willingness to have your mind changed. It means a willingness to assess things as they are, not as you'd wish them or hope them or dream them to be. Um, I have often stated that the, the potential that Mr. Jamie Heineman saw in me in 1993 and the degree to which he allowed me total access to his shop to expand my skill base. I didn't realize I was making myself more valuable. I thought I was just getting this free, awesome stuff, knowledge from it. But Jamie was very savvy uh, by letting me learn on in his shop and you know, seeing the way in which I took responsibility for that learning. He fomented in me uh, that, that skill. He helped really develop it. And so I feel like working for Jamie for those four years was like going, get my bachelor's degree. Uh, I, I would then go on and say that ILM was my master's degree and Mythbusters was my PhD. In what? I have the slightest notion, but something. Um, look, if you're going to I, so I was going to say this. I was going to say, if you're going to go on a job interview, you should bring as much of yourself to that job interview as possible. But I, I have to temper that, that phrase with, there are so many different jobs and so many different job applicants and so many different people interviewing people for those jobs. I can't discount, uh, I can't discount the privilege of my position, the way I grew up, how I was raised, all of that stuff. Um, but on the aggregate, I feel like when you are interviewing for a job, we, f I think in general, humans find the most satisfaction in doing things that they feel like they are making a difference uh, and 
you know, you want to work at a place that values your contribution, then the ultimate goal is to bring yourself to that interview and see if you are a match for that company. If they don't hire you, maybe that's like, maybe that's a real bonus. Maybe if they did hire you, they would have made your life a living hell. I feel like I'm wandering really far afield here. Jared has just asked a simple question. How much is based on the applicant's willingness to learn? Jared, that's a really hard thing to assess in an interview. However, in a good conversation with a good supervisor, you should be able to see somebody's passion, their intellect, their ingenuity. Uh, and you should endeavor as an interviewee to, to, to show those things if they are part of your roster of skills. Jared, thank you so much for that great question. I hope my rambling answer somehow helped. Thank you guys. Keep submitting your questions, tested patrons, and I will, as always, continue to answer them. Thanks. See you next time.